A warm and sincere welcome to this last Word for Wednesday of 2020. Happy Christmas to you all. I do hope that you have all enjoyed the season of Advent, culminating in Christmas Day, when we again celebrated the birth of the Lord Jesus. My thanks go to Willie for his readings, Catherine and Alison for their prayers, Darian for his accompaniment, and Joanne for compiling this service. Very grateful for this over all these months. Our call to worship is from Psalm 27, verses 1 and 14. The Lord is my light and my salvation. I will fear no evil. The Lord protects me from all danger. I will never be afraid. And at verse 14, trust in the Lord, have faith, do not despair, trust in the Lord. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we have come to worship you this day, to thank you for your faithfulness and to acknowledge your majesty. We gathered here to rejoice and to express our wonder at your love and goodness to us. Lord, we come to sing your praises and to declare our faith. Help us to make known the gospel to our friends, our families and our neighbours. Lord, we come humbly to seek your mercy, to confess our mistakes and sins before you. We recognise our weaknesses and we ask for your pardon. We know that we don't deserve it, so we thank you with grateful hearts for your forgiveness. Dear God, we pray for our world, remembering all our brothers and sisters, especially those who are being persecuted for their faith. Give us all a hunger and thirst to hear your message from scriptures today. Help us to listen to the words of Christ and the inner prompting of the Holy Spirit. Living God, accept this time of worship and help us through it to draw closer to you. Open our hearts to the love of Christ and our minds to all that you are. And so may we worship you, not just in these few moments, but in every moment of our lives. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Let us pray in the words that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen.
The reading is from Joshua chapter 3, verses 1 to 17, Crossing the Jordan. Early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set out from Shittim and went to the Jordan, where they camped before crossing over. After three days, the officers went throughout the camp, giving orders to the people, When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the priests, who are Levites, carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. Then you will know which way to go, since you have never been this way before. But keep a distance of about a thousand yards between you and the Ark. Do not go near it. Joshua told the people, Consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Joshua said to the priests, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass it on ahead of the people. So they took it up and went ahead of them. And the Lord said to Joshua, Today I will bring to exalt you in the eyes of all Israel, so that they may know that I am with you as I was with Moses. Tell the priests who carry the Ark of the Covenant, When you reach the edge of the Jordan's waters, go and stand in the river. Joshua said to the Israelites, Come here and listen to the words of the Lord your God. This is how you will know that the living God is among you, and that he will certainly drive out before you the Canaanites, Hittites, Hivites, Perizzites, Girgashites, Amorites and Jesuites. See, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of all the earth will go into the Jordan ahead of you. Now then, choose twelve men from the tribes of Israel, one from each tribe. And as soon as the priests who carry the Ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, set foot in the Jordan, its waters flowing downstream will be cut off and stand up in a heap. So when the people broke camp to cross the Jordan, The priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. Now the Jordan is in flood during harvest, yet as soon as the priests carried the Ark, reached the Jordan and their feet touched the water's edge, the water from upstream stopped flowing. It piled up in a heap at a great distance away at a town called Adam in the vicinity of Zarethan, where the waters flowed down to the Sea of the Arabah, the Salt Sea was completely cut off. So the people crossed over opposite Jericho. The priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood firm and dry ground in the middle of the Jordan, while all Israel passed by until the whole nation had completed the crossing on dry ground. And our second reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 17 and 18. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. May the Lord bless his reading of his holy word. Amen. My reflection is entitled Thanksgiving and Hope. Thanksgiving for what has been and hope for what lies ahead. Tomorrow is New Year's Eve, which means a lot of people are going to be spending time today and tomorrow coming out with New Year resolutions. Exercise more, get better organized, cut down on cakes and chocolates, and so on. There is no doubt that for most, this year has sapped the emotional energy from every sinew of our being, yet there have been positives. And we must look forward, be visionary Christians, and be glad we have our sovereign God who journeys with us, comforting our sorrows and rejoicing with our joys. Last year, the headlines here and abroad were dominated by the Australian bushfires. When, if you recall, we saw images of the Opera House in Sydney, shrouded in smoke and people 
going around wearing masks. Ironic, really. For some months on, these face coverings would appear on every continent as a guard against a different kind of respiratory threat. We have become an emblem of an alarming new age. It has been a year when time and days have been sometimes hard to tell apart. Planes have been grounded. Hospital admissions have fluctuated and a new normal has emerged. Handshakes and hugs have been banished and this at a time when there has been so much sadness and loss of life. Yet we all have been subjected to coping with this affection definite deficit disorder. But what about the positives? Social distancing has meant that many people have spent more time with their own families. People have reconnected via Zoom, texts, WhatsApp, telephone calls, and even, dare I say, the old-fashioned but much appreciated pen and paper. The churches in Hamilton South and Quarter adapted quickly, thanks to Joanne and her technical prowess. Presently, we are experiencing another lockdown, difficult but necessary. I recall in the earlier days of the pandemic being encouraged by human stories of small things making a big difference. People in Spain confined at home produced handmade medical masks for those who lack protective equipment. Half a million people in the UK responded within one day to an appeal to help isolated people. Children painted rainbows of hope and placed them in their windows and we're all aware of the upsurge of a digital prayer and worship materials to help nurture our spiritual lives. Then there was the jobless and the inevitable increase in hardship and poverty. But many rallied to the appeals for the food banks and drop-in centres and the supermarket collection boxes began to be full and in many cases over brimming. So 2020 has seen seasons of intense and conflicted emotions of dread and elation, of fear and of joy. We shall forever remember it, mindful of those who lost their lives and grateful for making it to this point. Last week at this time, we were concentrating our minds on dreams and angels, prophecies, mystery and magi choirs and carols, and we all made our way to the star-blessed stable, to the light shining miraculously on human misery and darkness. Today, there is still some degree of misery as we look at the effects of COVID and lockdowns and job losses and much, much more. But we must honour God's amazing gift in the form of Emmanuel, God with us the babe in the manger, and we must look to the future, for this babe was born to be the saviour of this dark world. Our reading from Joshua 3 tells the account of Joshua, who came after Moses as leader of the Israelites. Here he is crossing the flood-swollen river of Jordan, with one major goal in mind, to capture Jericho, and in so doing be on the way to conquering the promised land. However, at that particular time of the year, the current was very swift and the melting snows in Lebanon caused the river to overflow. But it was Joshua's goal, just as we have hurdles to surpass in 2021. Goals, even perhaps unimaginable challenges. Each one of us has a personal life narrative. We are very aware of our personal goals, our resolutions and our challenges. How do we overcome these challenges as we look towards 2021 with all that we have been through over these past 10 months and now facing another three weeks lockdown? From our reading, we learn that Joshua did not waste time. He had to lead two million Israelites over a flood swollen river one mile wide. He was decisive and he was trusting. So we learn from this that we too, when faced with a challenge, we have to strike while the iron is hot and by trusting in God's strength and wisdom, be decisive. We have to trust and obey. 
We have also to follow the guidance of our leaders, spiritual or other. Just as God's order was to follow the Levite priests, we must be subordinate to our leaders. This is wise as we step into a brand new year and we must make a commitment to abide by the rules, especially where this pandemic is concerned. Our political leaders have set out rules, but so also have our spiritual leaders who are teaching us from God's word. We have to listen to the word and apply it to our lives. Not one of us knows what the future holds. And just as the Israelites had little notion of the way, because it was new territory to them, they waited in God's presence. That being the Ark of the Covenant containing the Ten Commandments. We too must spend time in his presence as the new year unfolds. In Joshua 3, 9 to 13, God promised the Israelites that they would overcome the nations that occupied the land. They had been promised. God always keeps his promises. And we must remember this when we face the challenges and concerns in the year ahead. For they are like the flood swollen rivers, which we have to pass through. And we shall, if we trust God in his word. Lastly, we must apply our faith to the challenges we see before us. In verses 14 to 17, the river parted only after the priests waded into the water. Now this was risky, but practical faith involves risk. But just think, a risk is only a risk if God is not with us. So look back on all the times God has brought you through obstacles in the past, and this will supply confidence for what lies ahead. Joshua was faithful to his God, and we must show deep faith and thanks for God bringing us thus far and go boldly into the year about to begin. The Bible is full of examples of faithfulness and obedience. Mary, Jesus' mother, accepted the mandate from the angel Gabriel to carry Jesus in her womb. And the Lord blessed her with the most important birth in human history. Joseph was a faithful servant to Potiphar, the captain of the Egyptian guard. And years later, God allowed Joseph to be the second most important man in Egypt. And through him, saved the land from famine. David served King Saul by playing the harp whenever the king was distressed. And later on, David, as we know, was God's chosen faithful servant, and he took on the challenge of being king of Israel. What we need to realize is that whatever the challenge or goal we have in front of us, we do it in the strength that comes from God. God knows our strengths and our weaknesses, and he's a God who gives us chance after chance. So as we launch ourselves into this new year, Remember these words, if God is with us, who can be against us? Recently, I came across this little gem of an illustration, which I'm going to share with you. And it goes this way. He came to my desk with a quivering lip. The lesson was done. Have you a new paper for me, teacher? I've spoiled this one. I took his paper, all soiled and blotted, and gave him a new one, all unspotted. Then into his stirred heart I smiled. Do better now, my child. Here is the second one. I went to the throne with a trembling heart. The year was done. Have you a new year for me, father? I have spoiled this one. He took my year, all soiled and blotted, and gave me a new one, all unspotted. And into my tired heart he smiled. Do better now, my child. Yes, Joshua stepped out in faith because of the goal he had in sight, and we must too. Like him, we have to hold on to the fact that we as Christians are able to survive the pitfalls and problems of this world, like COVID, illness, bereavement, disappointment, and so much more. But we know in our hearts and by God's teaching from scripture, that these situations, awful as they are, do not compare with the hope we have in heaven. Eternity is not a reward for being good, but the home we were created for made possible for us 
by the birth of that baby Jesus and his sacrificial death over 30 years later. So let's cling on to this hope and God's promises that he will never leave us nor forsake us. No matter what we go through, the light of the world always shines through the darkness and provides this hope. Feel blessed in future days and stay focused on your faith because the best is yet to come. Nothing is too difficult for God. Always remember Romans 8, 28, which Paul says, we know that in all things, God works for good with those who love him, those whom he has called according to his purpose. May this coming year be one of great spiritual growth for us all at Hamilton South and Quarter. May it be one where we learn the name of Jesus more and more and never fail to see him for who he is, our King of Kings. May it be one where God does new things in our lives and may it be one when we are resolved to live with hope and with love for one another and for God. Blessings be upon you all in 2021 and always. And I said to the man who stood at the gate of the year, Give me a light that I may tread safely into the unknown. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious Heavenly Father, at this time between Christmas and New Year, when we traditionally pause to reflect, we bring before you, who have been our strength and light in ages past, all our hopes and fears for the coming year. Forgive us, Lord, for the times when in our humanity we have failed to see or follow the light you faithfully shine for all who would draw near. We bring before you our world, with all its darkness of the present pandemic, natural disasters, conflict, climate change, and we ask for wisdom for those in authority, both nationally and locally, as they make difficult decisions dealing with these. We bring before you the church worldwide, that it may seek your guidance as it goes forward and be granted wisdom and strength to discern and follow where you would lead it. We thank you for our moderator, Martin Fair, and ask you would bless him as he serves you in very different ways from what he would have expected. We thank you for and ask a blessing on Lynette, Joanne, Ian, Georgie, and all they seek to do in your service. We bring before you all who are struggling with physical and mental health, addiction, bereavement, loneliness, the effects of violence, asking that they may come to know you as the one true light of their lives and be granted your peace beyond all understanding. We thank you, Lord, for the family and friends you have given us, asking your blessing and protection on them. Help us, Lord, that as we step into the unknown of the coming year, we may find and take your hand that we may travel boldly into the dark night, being graciously led by you to the light of the coming day. All this we ask in the precious name of our Saviour Jesus. Amen.
The words in John Bell's hymn seem to strike a chord with our reflection. They are words of challenge and hope. Lord, your summons echoes true when you but call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I'll go where your love and footsteps show. Thus I'll move and live and grow in you and you in me. The words in this song, sung to the tune Kelvin Grove, speak of Christ's call, changing the ones being called. And in the same way, we as God's people change the world by giving witness by word and deed. The final verse, which I've just read, is our response to Christ's call today and in the year ahead. So let's grow together in 2021. I will close with a short prayer blessing. So go now in peace and never be afraid, for God will go with you each hour of every day. God will be there watching from above. So go now in peace, in faith and in love. God's blessing be with you all in 2021.